right, let's move into some code along. So before we do that, we need to set up what's called a build step. Um, and the reason behind that is because Flexbox uh, is actually been around for quite a while. However, um, it's gone through three different iterations of how Flexbox works. And um, as these things came out, and Chris Corey has got an awesome little article here about it, um, as they came out, browsers ship. So there's still quite a few browsers out there that either implement the old version of Flexbox or uh, there are some devices that have vendor prefix Flexbox. So if you try to like run any of these demos, just kind of straight up in, uh, in any other browser, uh, other than like r most recent Chrome or Firefox, you're gonna run into a bunch of issues. So uh, luckily for us, we don't have to like figure out what all of the different things are. Um, we can just run our code through a compile step. So um, here's just another silly example. I was looking at the uh, flex basis documentation on MDN for a flex basis and it says a brief history. It was originally flex basis auto. Then they changed it to main size, then they changed it back. So like clearly when they were kind of fleshing out Flexbox, there was a lot of confusion. Maybe I made a little disagreement as to what was going on. Um, but never fear, we have this thing called auto prefixer and you, uh, you may have actually heard of it before. Um, and what auto prefixer does is it just takes your code and the, the idea that is that we write our code with the latest and cleanest Flexbox spec. So I just got some uh, some of the code we did here and one of the other ones, I'm gonna paste it in. And what it will do, holy shit, look at what it does. It takes your nice clean Flexbox code and it will just prefix all of the possible vendor prefixes as well as uh, the older display box. So you got display, WebKit box, MS Flex box, Flex, box orient vertical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's no way you could possibly maintain this by hand. It's not like you're just doing like transition and WebKit transition. It's just way too hard uh, to be able to maintain it all. So uh, the idea is that we're going to have a build step that looks uh, at all of our stuff. Well, let me get center here. Add that back in real quick. Uh, th so the idea is that we're going to write the code here and it's going to be built. So we are going to be using a gulp.js now. There's tons of different ways that you can use Auto Prefixer to compile your code. Uh, you may have heard of CodeKit or Prepros or any of these other apps, or even if you just paste your uh, paste your document your code into here and, and have it kind of spit it out the other end. Um, however, ideally, we would have something that watches our CSS, and every time we save it, it's going to recompile it into this. So, uh, if you're familiar with Grunt or Gulp and you know what Auto Prefixer is, then feel free to just totally skip this. Uh, entire video and move on to the next one. But uh, if you're uh, if you're new to Gulp, um, I'm going to show you kind of, I'm just going to cowboy it. I'm going to go ahead and install it from scratch and show you sort of how I get something set up like this. Um, I've got an entire book and video series on Gulp coming out, but uh, this should get you up and running for at least just auto prefixer. So first thing you need is you need to have Node.js installed. Um, if you don't have Node installed, uh, the way, or if you're not sure, the way you can check is just go to your terminal. So uh, on your computer, uh, there is going to be a terminal application, or there will also there will be one called uh, I think it's called PowerShell on Windows. Um, and you just type node minus v, and if you get a number back, that means you have node installed. If you don't get anything back at all, uh, that means you need to go ahead to nodejs.org and click the downloads, and you can just next next next. It gives you a nice little installer. Um, so when you have that on open, we're going to head over to the command line here um, and just go into the directory of uh, where you have something. So I've just got some an index.html file. Yeah, I'll show you in here. Index.html file is just some HTML. We're not going to be touching that. Uh, and then this is just a CSS that we're going to be auto prefixing. So that's it. Um, we need a couple more files to get up and running. The first one is uh, what's called a package.json file. And a package.json, I won't go into it too much, but it essentially tracks your dependencies. Uh, it's going to track the versions and which plugins we need installed. So uh, to do that, you type npm init and hit enter, and it's just going to give you a whole bunch of different questions here. Um, for our cases, we're okay to just keep hitting enter, enter, enter until you're back at the command line. And you'll see that that created a package.json file. Uh, and in there, there's just some information. We'll be looking at that in just a second. Next up, what we want to do 
uh, is go ahead and install Gulp. Uh, so you can type, we need to install Gulp twice actually. You need to install Gulp globally. So the way you do that is you type npm install Gulp dash G and that will install it globally on your entire machine. Uh, if you get issues with that, go ahead and put a sudo npm install gulp g in front of it. Um, so sometimes people don't have the, the correct permissions to run uh, install on the global level. So you have to type sudo, here I'll show you. And hit enter and it's gonna ask you for your password. You type in your password, it won't show you anything up here, but I just type mine. Uh, and then you hit enter and it will go ahead and install. So I'm not going to go ahead and install because I already have it. Um, and the other thing that you need to do now is uh, we need to create a gulp file. And the gulp file is going to sort of hold the, the process for what we're doing. So I'm going to say touch gulp file.js. And uh, that's just going to make a blank gulp file for me there. And then we actually need to go ahead and install a couple plugins that we need. So we need a local version of gulp. And the way to install is npm install gulp. And we want to say dash dash save dev. What that will do is it's going to go off and install uh, the gulp thing for us. But if you go back to your package.json, you should see that gulp is added to your dependencies. Uh, what else do we need in there? We actually need gulp, I'm oh, sorry, npm install uh, gulp dash auto prefixer dash dash save dev and you're gonna go ahead and install that as well. There we go. It's in there. Cool. I'm gonna close that down. Then we head into our gulp file and we this is how you write a gulp file. You say var gulp equals require gulp. And that's gonna include the entire gulp library. Uh, and then we also need to include all of the plugins that we want. In our case, we we only have auto prefixer, but you might have like SAS or less or whatever you're using here. So we'll say um, var auto prefixer equals require gulp dash auto prefixer. And then we are going to make a task, we'll say gulp.task and task takes two things. First is the name uh, and call it styles. And the second thing is a function to run. So I'm just gonna pass it an anonymous function there. Uh, next thing we need to do is go ahead and source our file. So the way Gulp works is that you go and grab the contents of your file. We're going to run it through our plugins. In this case, it's just run it through Auto Prefixer, and then we'll kick it out the other end uh, in another file called uh, I don't know what, like build forward slash styles.css. So we'll say gulp.src, and I'm going to go into my CSS directory and styles.css. And, and by the way, this can be any file if you have a different setup. Uh, you can always do star.css or you could do star star star.css and that will grab all of them. It really depends on how your 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 setup. Uh, but I'm gonna leave mine as styles.css, so CSS styles, and then I will type pipe. And the way that gulp works is that you pipe the contents of the style.css into auto prefixer. And then once we've done that, we can type pipe it into another one called gulp.dest. And I'll just pipe that into a directory called build or output or whatever you want. So what that should do, we might have to play around with the folders here, but uh, what that should do is we should be able to go back to our command line now and run gulp in the name of the task that we just created, which is styles and hit enter. And oh, I got an error. So let's, let's see what we got here. CSS syntax error missed semicolon. Oh, that's nice. It's telling me that uh, I screwed up my CSS here. So I'm gonna go look where it's aligned content. Oh, there we go. I tried to quickly add that in later. So then we go back. I'm just gonna rerun. You can hit the up arrow to get the, the most recently run task there. And let's see, there we go. It ran it. Um, I should be able to open this build directory. And inside of that, we see styles.css and beautiful all of my uh, auto prefix styles have been added on there. So the way you would do it is you'd go into your HTML and your link would not go to CSS styles.css because that's your unprefixed version. Uh, we actually want to go into build for its slash styles and that should uh, do it for us. Last thing we want to do is add what's called a watch task. So I don't want to have to manually rerun gulp styles every time I want to rerun my compiler. I want it to do it automatically for me. So you head back to your gulp file and we'll make another task called default. 
Um, and actually I can call it watch there and inside of that we'll pass it another one but instead of doing like a gulp.source like we have been doing you can do a gulp.watch and pass it a list of CSS files in this case it's just the one uh, that you wish to watch and then when those change you can pass it a an array of styles to run or sorry an array of gulp tasks to run so in our case our task name is style so we're gonna say just rerun styles whenever this file changes. So um, now I'm gonna go back here and instead of typing gulp styles, I'm gonna type gulp watch. And you'll notice that it doesn't kick me back to the command line, why? Because it's watching it. And I should be able to go back to the CSS file and every time I save, see, there you go. It will just save, save, save. Every time I save, it's gonna rerun my styles task and going to update uh, all of the, the code that I have. So real quick, if I uh, open up the build CSS, open it up there, and I do something like change this to like 450, immediately you see it's changed there. Uh, bring this one down to 360, save, you see it's compiled there, and then this one updates right away. So really nice kind of clean and fast way uh, to get our code to compile. So that's Gulp Auto Prefixer. Um, definitely need that in order to support uh, all the different browsers, even the current browsers. Um, all right, let's get into the code alongs. I'll see you in the next video.